Well, we've talked about the negatives, but now let's touch on the positives. Of course, you know, 2020 was a difficult year, but there were some moments that actually did inspire us, encourage us, and even give us hope. And I think that's important. So these are my nominees for the most badass moments of 2020. First, I am nominating Donald Trump's defeat. Even if I don't like Joe Biden, I absolutely loathe Donald Trump and everything that he did this year. His, you know, increasing authoritarianism, cracking down on protests, his election fraud lies trying to cripple the U.S. Postal Service, uh, him mishandling a pandemic, thus leading to hundreds of thousands of Americans dying. Him getting defeated really was a nice thing to see, even if it is bittersweet because his replacement is someone who is bad. <laughs> now, my second nomination is the Black Lives Matter uprising in Minneapolis following the murder of George Floyd, which catalyzed an international civil rights movement. What we saw in Minneapolis is the blueprint for social movements going forward. If you want a city to actually take action and listen to you, what they did in Minneapolis, you saw the pain, you saw the anger and emotions, but most importantly, you saw the effectiveness of their actions. They got everyone in the country and the world to pay attention to their cause, and it worked. So, of course, this moment was pretty badass. Now, also, even though this moment ultimately amounted to not much, Bernie Sanders' landslide victory in Nevada really was a moment of hope and inspiration. It made it feel like anything was possible. Like, we all kind of thought that Bernie had a good chance at winning in Nevada, but to win by that much and to see the reaction of the establishment and pundits on MSNBC, it felt really good. And again, he lost in the grand scheme of things. This led nowhere, but it was a moment, for me at least, that I look back at and I remember the feelings that I felt. And I like, I want that feeling again. I'm going to be constantly searching to get a victory like that so I could rekindle that feeling. And, and it was just such a meaningful day where everyone on the left was in solidarity. We were all cheering. And it's, it's really, I think, a significant moment of the year. It was badass. So, of course, I had to nominate it. And my last nomination, of course, is the shocking victory of Cori Bush. She ran for Congress before in 2018, and she lost. And going into this primary against Lacey Clay, you know, it, it was going to be a really difficult battle, but she put in the work and she won and she won handily. And now we're going to have Cori Bush in Congress. Like, if that's not badass, nothing is if you're a left winger. Uh, so those are my nominees. But of course, there were some honorable mentions and this was really tough. So the failure of the coup in Bolivia and victory of the Socialist Party I mean, this was really badass. I don't know how else to put it. This gave me hope. This gave credibility to the international socialist movement. This was great to see. We also have Katie Porter's takedown of a big pharma CEO as an honorable mention. In fact, you personally received half of a, half a million dollars personally just by tripling the price of Revlimid. And of course, we have a citizen who delivered this scathing message to the LAPD following the Black Lives Matter protests. You are a disgrace. Suck my dick and choke on it. I yield my time. Fuck you. So this was really difficult for me to narrow it down to only four, but there can only be one winner. So the Humanist Report audience decided. And in fourth place, we have Cori Bush's win with nearly 1,300 votes as the most badass moment. In third place, we have Bernie's Nevada win with nearly 1,500 votes, which means for badass moment of the year, it came down to the Minneapolis Black Lives Matter uprising and Donald Trump's defeat and the winner of the most badass moment of the year, according to the Humanist Reports audience, is Donald Trump's defeat with over 4,300 votes. This is officially the most badass moment of 2020, which means that the Minneapolis Black Lives Matter uprising is the runner up with over 4,200 votes. So this was really close. I mean, 100 votes separated the winner and the runner up. In terms of where I stand, I don't know if I agree that Trump's defeat is like the biggest badass moment. 
if I really was forced to pick, I would probably choose the BLM Uprising. But I could see why people would say that, because it is really nice to see someone who is just like this cartoonishly evil Bond villain lose. Uh, but this is why, ultimately, Trump's defeat won, because the audience is we're really split uh, when it comes to our Twitter and Patreon audience and our YouTube audience. So on Twitter, the Minneapolis uprising is the decisive winner with 49.2%. And then we have Bernie Sanders' Nevada victory coming in a distant second with 18.9%. We have Cory Bush's victory narrowly coming in third with 18.5%. And actually on Twitter, Trump's defeat came in fourth with 13.4%, which, uh, I mean, it's obviously funny because this is the overall winner. Now, when it comes to Patreon, on, the Minneapolis uprising is the winner with 67%. Cory Bush's win came in second with 20%. Bernie's Nevada victory came in third with 9%. And again, Trump's defeat came in fourth place with 5% of the total votes. Now, when it comes to our YouTube audience, you can see why Trump's defeat ended up winning because our YouTube audience overwhelmingly tipped the scales in favor of Trump's defeat being the biggest badass moment with 42% supporting that. But I mean, not too far away is the BLM uprising with 35% in second place. Then we have Bernie's Nevada victory in a distant third at 12%, Cory Bush's win in fourth at 10%. And looking at all of the results overall, you can see that the audience was very clearly divided. You have people who voted on Patreon and Twitter overwhelmingly saying that the BLM uprising in Minneapolis is the most badass moment, whereas the YouTube audience was a little bit more torn with more overall leaning towards Trump's defeat. And it wasn't by much, but it was enough to put Trump's defeat over the edge, making it the most badass moment of the year. Now, getting to our comments, JB on YouTube says, beating Trump isn't badass when it's Biden winning. It's bittersweet. And I do see how that, uh, you know, how you could think that. AB on YouTube says, Trump was one guy, but BLM uprising was one generation. Hence, as much as I enjoyed Trump getting wrecked, I gotta go with BLM. Totally see that. Mark Sismo on YouTube says, The Nevada win was the best day ever. I was in Vegas on that day knocking doors. What an insane year. Yeah. Garrison Rucker on Patreon says, While there's no doubt that the BLM protests were powerful, let's not forget that one of the movement's leading activists, Cory Bush, beat a political dynasty and will be heading to Congress. Phenomenal point. That ACDC guy on Twitter says, I still think the most badass moment has to be Bolivia overthrowing the fascist coup. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, all good points. Uh, you know, when there's not much to be happy and thankful about in a year, you know, you're really looking for the best moments. And what we got really were encouraging moments to see. Like Trump's defeat undeniably is a good thing, even if, again, Joe Biden sucks. Uh, the BLM movement, I mean, that's not going anywhere. And seeing that uprising in Minneapolis, it really gave me hope that things are going to change in America. Like we're no longer going to be satisfied with the crumbs that politicians throw us. We're going to demand more. But I mean, Cory Bush's victory... Nevada, all really just big moments. So in a year overall, that was pretty difficult. You know, I'm going to cherish all of these moments. <laughs> they were all badass. But I mean, the most badass moment, of course, is Trump's defeat, according to the YouTube audience.